Okay, so let's look at the difference between an ordinary annuity and an annuity due. And this is also laid out in the slides, but I just wanna do, I do think it's a little easier to talk about uh, if we just work some problems alongside it. So I'm gonna do sort of copy what is in the slides. And what I wanna do is I wanna compare the cash flows of an ordinary annuity with the cash flows of an annuity due. All right, so this is ordinary annuity up top and annuity due down on the bottom. Now remember that the only difference between these two types of annuities is that an ordinary annuity has cash flows that occur at the end of every period and the annuity due has cash flows that occur at the beginning of every period. So if we, for instance, have a four year annuity that has a payment of $500 a month the ordinary annuity would have the payments occur at the end of year one, at the end of year two, at the end of year three, and at the end of year four. All right, so four years, $500 payment per year. The ordinary annuity payments come at the end of every period. The annuity due payments come at the beginning of every period. So the $500 comes at the beginning of year one at the beginning of year two, the beginning of year three, and the beginning of year four, right? Otherwise, they have four $500 cash flows. It's just that with an annuity due, we get those four cash flows slightly faster than with the ordinary annuity, right? In fact, really the only difference is in these two cash flows. Because notice that these cash flows are all exactly the same and occur at exactly the same time. So the difference between an ordinary annuity and annuity due really comes back down to the last cash flow and the first cash flow. An annuity due gets the first cash flow a full period before. And an ordinary annuity gets the last cash flow a full period after. Otherwise, they are exactly the same contract. Now, we can solve uh, for, say, the present value of these annuities uh, using the calculator. Uh, and again, there's not going to be much difference here. If, let's say, we want to solve for present value, right, then we would need to know the rate, we would need to know the in, we would need to know the payment, and any future value. Right? So I will just make up a bunch of numbers here. Let's say the rate is 8% per year. Uh, let's say the end is, oh, well, we don't need to, let's say the end is four years. There's four years of payments. Uh, we know the payment here, $500 per year, uh, and we're, we don't have any future value. There's no lump sum at the end that's coming to us. Right? So we can uh, solve for the ordinary annuity present value. Uh, we just simply compute the present value. The default on the calculator is for an ordinary annuity. So if you have solved any annuity problem on your calculator so far, you have been solving for an ordinary annuity. Uh, so we don't have to do anything. We, uh, we clear our time value of money, second future value. Uh, then we enter in our values. We got 8% per year interest, so eight and IY. Uh, our N is four years, so four and then N. The payment on this annuity is $500 per year. So that's our payment. We compute our present value, and we see that the present value of this is 1656.0634. Uh, now, uh, the only difference with an annuity due is that the cash flows come at a separate time. Uh, and the main difference is that this first cash flow uh, comes earlier in an annuity due. And so we are able to earn a little bit more interest a little bit sooner uh, than if we had to wait for that first cash flow to come for a year in an ordinary annuity. So an annuity due is generally gonna be more valuable and it's gonna be more valuable just because of this first year's interest comes to us faster. Okay. Now in the calculator, we can solve for the annuity due uh, in a pretty straightforward way. And we, we can do it uh, actually pretty easily. Uh, we have to change one setting on the calculator. And that setting is that we need to tell the calculator that the payments happen at the beginning and not at the end. Okay? And notice above the payment button is uh, the word BGN, right? So begin. 
And this is how we tell the calculator to change the timing of the payments. So we can clear out of here. We can even clear our work, clear the time value money buttons. Uh, and the way to change the payment so that we calculate for an ordinary annuity is to press second and then the payment key. And when you do that, you'll see the default, which is the ending. So this is saying default is the payments come at the end. That's our ordinary annuity. To change it, notice up here it says set. And above the enter button, it says set. That's how we change it. Calculator is telling us what to do. Press second and then the enter button. It'll change to BGN. You'll also see BGN display up here at the top of the calculator. Uh, and we can clear out and you'll see that the BGN now displays above the decimal places. This is reminding you that you're not in the default anymore. The calculator is set to begin mode. Once you've done that, you do everything else exactly the same. So we re-enter our numbers. 8 IY 4 N 500 payment and then compute our present value. And as we expected, we have a slightly higher present value, 1788.5485. And it's higher precisely because of the additional interest that we earned uh, from getting that first payment sooner. Now, the biggest thing with the annuity due is that we wanna to remember to go back, right? All the, we're only gonna work a few annuity due problems in your homework or on an exam. So you wanna make sure that you go, always go back to the ordinary annuity setting so that you don't uh, do the rest of your problems as annuity dues. Uh, and the way to go back is just to do exactly the same thing that we did, right? So second payment, second enter. Now we're back at end mode. We don't see the BGN word again. Uh, and, uh, and we're back in our normal setting. Now, one of the cool things about the calculator and one of the ways to take advantage of the fact that it stores all these values is that because I didn't clear my time value of money, I can solve for the annuity and the annuity due in the same step, right? So I just solved for the annuity due. I didn't clear my time value of money. If I recompute my, my present value, so compute present value again, I come back and I have the value for my ordinary annuity. Right, so I can just change the setting, then recompute the present value and get my answer both ways. Okay. Now, one of the things we might be interested in is what's the difference and uh, you know, in terms of uh, how much more valuable the annuity due is. And of course, that is just the difference between the present values. Uh, so there's nothing complicated here. We subtract uh, 1656 uh, and six cents from 1788. Uh, which is the, uh, the present value for the annuity due. And we find that an annuity due is worth more to us by $132.48.